Okay, so now we're in the burnout project. Now keep in mind, I am doing these tutorials in a quarter resolution. So uh, it's not gonna be your screen or anything. It's just, I really have it bumped down as suggested with this particular project. So in the burnout project here, uh, when you open up, you're going to see the full 1080p here. It's gonna have a few uh, splice cuts with the preview attractions and the, the little uh, retro ratings comp there. I just left those as uh, tail ends. But in the burnout project, you're gonna see it right here, burnout pack trailer. Now we can double click inside there. And when we double click inside there, we're gonna to come to uh, our essential layout that has all our color presets and lens grind mixer and all our film controllers to mess around with the uh, sprocket controls and uh, quake effects and all that stuff. So again, your tools, as I keep repeating, for you to play around and experiment with all this upper half here. Now down below, you are going to see the scratch mat for which you can shut on and off. Uh, and, and as you work in and you know you're going to use it, let's say, you may just want to shut it off while you're working to speed up the process. How we can start to work with this is very simple. You can see it's divided up into uh, each comp and it's laid out in the timeline here. So starting with the title, we can just double click inside there. And once again, all the same controllers. So this should become very familiar for you. Now you're going to see quite a few pre-comps here that are not checked on. And I just put those there as options for you. So if, you know, you'll see a pre-comp here that has a, uh, you know, hair. And if you turn that on, you're going to start to see a little uh, hairs at the bottom. You know, your fire dust. Okay, so all these are going to be your mats. And all they are are drag and drop systems. You know, you can just right click, go to reveal layer source and project. And that's going to take you to the fire uh, dust mats. And remember, in this project, I did once again go to file, remove unused footage. So anything that was not used in the project uh, was taken out just to trim down the bulk. So you're going to have more, in this case, dust mats if you decide to use them. So remember, you just want to import those in from your collection. Okay, so a simple drag and drop system which is the case for the film burn. Uh, in changing the title quick, before we get to the film burn, we're gonna see a placeholder here. And again, this will be the same routine for each comp with the film burn. So we can double click. Inside there, you're gonna see a paper mat, which is gonna give it that, that kind of uh, rough grain. So you can choose to keep it on or off or play around with it. Uh, and in here is going to be the text mat. Double click. Okay, simple as that. So now I'm just going to move on to an actual comp that has the film burns. So we'll start with comp number one. So if we double click on there, in each comp, you're going to see a set of cameras. There may be two or three or maybe four in some cases. Again, your film controls. And then your cameras. Now, these cameras, uh, for the most part, are not being animated. But their depth of field is. Okay, so if you wanted to change the depth of field, just go into the actual cameras of uh, any of the comps. And you can change the focus distance or the blur aperture. If you were to really bump up the blur aperture... A little bit more you're gonna see that it's gonna really go out of focus here now you can also change the uh, background uh, the depth of field design in 5.5 and 6 they're gonna give you more uh, aperture uh, options but in CS5 you're just given uh, what you see here so you can change the focus distance or bump down the blur level if you wanted to R remember this is just animating a pull focus effect okay I mean, you have the option to reset these cameras in different angles if you choose to. So you can simply just highlight, let's say, camera one. And the letter C is going to allow you to toggle through your camera settings. So I'm just going to move the camera back, as you can see here. Now, if I do that, I just have to readjust the focus distance. So I'd probably pull that up a little bit more. 
Okay, so I had to change that value there. And then, of course, you can animate the, the shaking of the camera quake, the uh, film gate, but also the zoom of the camera, the rotation of the camera. Now, down below here and each comp, you're going to see the grains. Then we have our scratch mat. Now, I kept this checked off because you can see that I do have it on uh, the entire run here. However, you know, if you did want to really get dirty, you could just add that on as well. And of course, you can swap these out. Now, going into the film burn itself, in this case, we can see how this burn is going to start to happen. Uh, but we can get a better idea of it if we just add an image in there. So let's just uh, place a photo and or a video. But in this case, I'm just going to do a photo. So as we place a photo in this comp here, let me just put it into a, a wider shot. Okay, so we want to put a photo in here or a video. All we have to do is go to the placeholder. So when you see the placeholder here, just double click. And then we can just add our text here. We can change it if you decide to change, you know, this vulgar text here. Do so right there. And in this case, we can just get an image. And drag and drop it right underneath our text. And you just may have to scale it, adjust it how, you know, you see fit. I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll just move this text down a little bit or shut it off for now. And that's it. So now your image is going to start to burn away. And as we cut through the cameras, and to replace your film burns, uh, all you got to do is double click on the film burn comp that you see there. And I'm just going to right click on here. Again, go to reveal source and project. That way it takes me right there. Okay, so I'm using film burn 24. I'm just going to see how a different film burn looks. So in this case, I'm going to drop uh, film burn number 11 on there. All right, so now you can see this has a different color tone than what I was using. So with this film burn, it's darker, uh, different type of, of burn that's erupting here versus this. Now you can mix and match. You could always just uh, highlight the top and experiment, go to mode and, and do a blending mode like add or if you hold down shift and hit the plus and minus on your keyboard, it's going to to uh, toggle you through your blending modes. So if I were to just do that, I can quickly toggle through different burn modes here so you can do some cool stuff but let's just say you do one burn and we're gonna go back to uh, film, uh, film burn number 11 which looks like this now when we go back to the actual comp you're gonna notice it's just gonna be a different appearance so you want to be aware of if you're choosing a lighter film burn versus the darker, you're just going to have to make a few adjustments. So what we want to do in this case is simply just make some modification. Again, this is going to be all experimentation on your part because you can do some simple uh, tweaking around with your film burn blending modes. So as you can see here, I have two things going on with the film burn. For one, let me shut this top one off. The placeholder is uh, being used as an alpha mat alpha channel I should say with the film burn okay so with that on top of if I hold down the uh, the placeholder for a second and I just go to uh, my effects control you can see that I have a displacement map on this placeholder so as that film burn starts to have this rippling design we want to be able to kind of get that sensation through uh, this happening to our image so with that, we have the placeholder with a displacement map effect on it, and it is pointing to the film burn precomp. Now we have a second film burn on top of that, which is overlaying this blending mode of uh, you know the burn effect. So if I just hold down shift again, hit the plus, 
I start to just kind of go through some of this, you can see you can kind of have some really cool different effects just by playing around with your blending mode. You know, and, that, and it's totally up to you. That that one looks pretty cool right there. It's just kind of really uh, utilizing that dark space right there. Uh, secondly, you may or may not want to check on uh, the curves. So you may want to add some more curves or uh, adjust some more levels so you could go into your color correction and go into the levels and, and really start to uh, push those blacks. Okay, and you can really get a, a more nasty looking contrasted film burn with that. Now on top of that, when you do play around with the film burn mats, I'm going to go back into uh, the film burn pre-comp for a second. I'm just going to double click on there. And what you can do, as I did with the original here, you can see I put a, a time remap on there. And that way, get used to doing this because you can really uh, mess around and play around with controlling the, the speed of the burn as well as the time lapse of the burn if you want to make it go reverse or, or what have you. So what you want to do is simply just right click on the, the mat, go to time, enable time remapping. So you can, of course, figure out when you want this burn to start erupting. So you may not want it to start until, you know, the first second. So you're just going to move that keyframe up a little bit. And if I go to the very end of this, you can see that it's still burning. So if I were to pull this time forward, I'm just going to... speed up time a little bit so I start to get that really cool burn effect that's going on where the the uh, film is just kind of bleeding away like this it's pretty cool So that brings on a whole different look now that we sped up this moment here when we go back to the actual comp you're gonna see a lot of difference and the outcome of when this kinda of comes to the end here So I kind of like that light and mix right there. Uh, also soft light works a lot of times. But do remember, once you start to adjust the blending modes of this top film burn here, you may have to readjust the, uh, the curves or the levels uh, for the starting point because you're going to see that the, the colors are going to be a little bit different. If I were to shut this off, you know, you can see that the tone changes slightly. I personally like it. and and. I'm not trying to balance out any colors with this project because it's supposed to be grimy. It's supposed to feel vintage and off, uh, which is always the best for me anyway. Um, but do keep that in mind. So you do want to kind of check back before it burns and just kind of go back to your burn point and play around with the blending modes and, and see what you dig.